All right, hi everyone. Welcome back to Digital Dreambox. So we are going to model a vase in this tutorial and it's going to be a multi-parter. So in this one, in this video, we will do the modeling phase. And in the following segments, we will UV unwrap it and we'll give it a render as well. Cause I know a couple of you have asked how I do the renders for my thumbnails. So I'll take you through that process as well. Uh, let's not waste any more time though and jump right in. All right, let's get started. So we're about to make a vase and there's different ways to go about it. The method that I'll be using will be to use one of Maya's curve tools to help me create it. First, let's hop into our four panel view. So tap your spacebar. And if you take a look at my front panel, I already have a reference loaded in. So if you wanna use this reference, I'll post a link down below, as well as a link to a video I made on how to set up references in Maya, just in case you're unsure. All right, let's take a look at this image. I'm gonna turn off the grid for a second. The vase that I'll be modeling will be this one right here. However, um, you don't have to create that one if you don't want to. You can uh, model one of the other ones or you can freehand it and model um, something different and unique as well. Um, but I'll be uh, creating this one. Now let's uh, grab our curve tool. So to get to your curve tools, go up to the create tab. Then down here you have your curve tools and you'll see a bunch of curve, to curve tools. Um, the one that I'll be using is the CV curve tool. That's this one right here. Um, I like it for this object just because it gives a really nice uh, smooth transition between points. So I'm gonna select it and let me take you through the basics on how to use this tool. So to use the curve tool, all you need to do is click on the viewport and then you'll see a point. Um, as you keep clicking, it'll start laying down more points and then by the time you get to the fourth point, you'll be able to see your curve. As you keep clicking, it'll keep building that curve, and then you can just stop once you have the curve um, the way you like it. If you lay down a point that you don't want, all you need to do is press delete on the keyboard to delete your last point, and then if you press delete again, it'll delete another point. If you press escape, it'll delete your entire curve, and you'll have to start over, so watch out for that. And then finally, um, when you're done, just press enter on the keyboard and that'll complete your curve for you. What we're going to do is we're going to draw out the curve to match the curvature of our vase, and then we'll revolve it. And finally, we'll convert it to polygons. So let's get started. I'm just gonna delete this curve. Uh, there's more to the curve tool, but we'll cover more things as we start building out this vase. All right, I'll bring back my grid now. And then the first thing I'm going to do is first uh, select my curve tool again, which is the last tool I used, which is over here. And I'm gonna hold down X on the keyboard to enable grid snapping. And I'm gonna lay down a point right here. Actually, before I do that, if you take a look at my image, you can see that it's sitting slightly below the ground plane. And the reason for that is this image is a perspective view. So I need to take that into account because um, objects such as these generally have a flat uh, bottom section. So I need to um, um, take some liberties and model it with a flat bottom section. All right. So I'm going to hold down X on the keyboard, lay down my first point, then I'm going to hold down shift on the keyboard. That will allow me to add another point, but it'll be parallel to this point. So I'm going to lay down actually two points. So maybe one right about here and another right about here. And the reason I'm doing that is it'll help keep this mid area of the bottom flat. And you'll be able to see that later on. Um, essentially this extra point will give me an extra edge loop on the bottom. Right, next I'm gonna lay down a point right about here um, and then that will bring this curve up. So it'll start curving up and it'll stop right about here. Otherwise, if I didn't have that point, it'll curve all the way to this point and my vase will be rolling on the ground. Right, next I'll lay another point right about here in this mid area. And then about three points here, one right here, one at the peak here, and another right here. Don't worry too much if your curve doesn't match exactly your vase. Um, we'll be adjusting these points later. All right, and then over here, I could probably just lay down three more points. So one, two, and three. And then finally, um, I can press enter now, or I can keep um, drawing out this curve. What I like to do though, is just make this outside section. Uh, there's a couple reasons for that. Um, one, I know that um, if I just make the outside section, 
It allows me to adjust this curve quite easily and make other objects, um, other vases if I want to. And secondly, um, the method that I do, which is just to build the outside section, when, later on when we convert it to polygons, if I extrude it, I know I get a consistent thickness with this. Now for an object like this, which is opaque, probably doesn't matter, matter too much. Um, but if your object was say semi-transparent, you may want a consistent thickness. But if you are making another object such, such as say a wine glass, you would probably want to keep drawing your curve through because the um, sections have different thicknesses, right? But I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to press enter to complete my curve. And I'm also going to turn off this grid. All right, so my curve is um, set right now. I'm going to hold down the right mouse button next to bring up um, these curve point um, properties. And I'm going to choose control vertex. So control vertex allows me to adjust the curvature. So I'm going to go into my move tool and just move some of these points around. Um, I'm not going to fine tune it too much, but I'm just going to get the shape pretty close. So I'm going to select this one as well, move it over here. So you'll probably want to adjust your curve a little bit uh, to match your vase. So this one I'll bring over here and that should be good enough for me. All right. So let's go back into object mode. So I'm going to hold down the right mouse button, choose object mode again. So here's my curve. And now we're going to revolve this. So let's switch to our two panel view for this one. So I'm going to click this um, panel option right here. And you can see that my curve in the perspective uh, panel here looks like this. So let's revolve this now. Um, there's a couple ways to get to your revolve option. So one method is, um, sorry, one way is to go up here to the surfaces tab. And down here you can see revolve. Or another way would be to go to your curves and surfaces shelf. And you can see revolve is over here as well. It looks like a wine glass. So make sure your curve is selected and then just click this icon right here. And there you go. You can, you can see that our curve has revolved around and um, it looks like our vase. So if I were to turn on x-ray mode for a second, you can see that it matches it quite nicely. All right, um, I'm gonna just, just gonna turn off x-ray mode. And now um, this object here isn't polygons yet. Um, it's actually called a NURB surface. So we need to convert it to polygons. And so I'm gonna select this object. Um, and to do that, we're gonna go up here to the Modify tab, which is right here. Go down here to Convert. And over here, you have your conversion options. The one we're looking for is NURBS to Polygons. Open up that option box. And there's different methods to convert this. I'm just gonna reset this. Um, the method that we'll be using is control points. So um, I like control points because it will allow us to match the curvature of this quite nicely. So um, later on when we smooth it out. So choose control points and then just press uh, click tessellate. There you go. And then um, so it's converted this to uh, geometry now. So polygons, I'm just going to move this off to the side. So you can see over here we have our um, a geometry, so our polygons, you have your NURB surface. Let's move the NURB surface, NURB surface to the side as well so you can take a look at it. There we go. So if I were to select this one and press 3 on the keyboard to preview smooth, you can see that later on when we smooth this, it's going to look like this. I'm going to press 1 on the keyboard to go back. So before we um, extrude it and smooth it, uh, there's something that you should uh, be aware of. It's that um, the bottom, where the vertices meet in the middle, those most likely are not merged um, using the control points method. So let me show you. First, go to um, display, heads up display. We're going to enable our poly count uh, display. And then I'm going to go into vertex mode. So vertex selection. And I'm going to box select this vertex over here. I'm just going to turn off this grid. I don't need it anymore. So I've box selected uh, that vertex. And you can see that I have eight there. So let's merge those. So we're going to um, go back to our poly modeling shelf. There's a merge to center option right here. So click on this and you can see now we have one vertex. All right. So the next thing I want to do is I want to extrude this to give it some thickness. So let's go into object mode, select your uh, vase, and then uh, hold down shift on the keyboard as well as the right mouse button. And we're going to choose extrude. And I'm going to actually extrude inwards. That way I don't mess with the um, overall form of this one so that it matches this one exactly. 
doesn't really matter. We can scale it later, but I'm going to extrude, uh, extrude, uh, sorry, extrude inwards. There we go. And I think something like that should be fine for the thickness for me. Um, if you take a look though, our mesh is black. So these normals are reverse. So let's reverse these normals. Go up to mesh display and um, reverse right here. All right. And then finally, um, what I'm going to do is um, smooth this out. So this is what we have so far. Let's actually give it a real smooth. So I'm gonna hold down shift and the right mouse button, choose smooth. And this preview, um, sorry, this NURB surface is actually a smoothing level of two. So I'm gonna change this to two. And there we go. Our vase is done and it looks like this and the shape looks pretty good and it has a nice flat uh, bottom section as well. Uh, we're not quite done though. We could easily make different shapes if we want. So first I'm gonna select this object and delete its history. That way it's not affected when we adjust this curve. Um, so I'm just gonna show you. Delete history, there we go. And now let's go back to our two panel view. And if you take a look over here, we ha still have this NURB surface and we can select this curve if we want to. I'm gonna hold down the right mouse button again to go to control vertex. And we can move some of these vertices around and create a new shape. So to do that, what I'm gonna do is just grab, sorry, box select a few of these vertices and just move them. And you can see that it's quite easy, uh, easy to change this shape. There we go. Maybe move this one over here a little bit. And maybe I'll move these ones in a little bit as well. So without much time, we can create another um, vase quite quickly. If I were to um, model like one of these other ones, I would probably just um, create a new curve to tell you the truth. But we can create a new interesting shape off of this one just by moving some of these points around. And once we're done, we can just take this. If we want, we can just duplicate it to uh, delete the history on this nerve surface so that we can select this curve again and uh, move some of these points around. There we go. And then later we can extrude this one as well um, after we convert it to polygons. So it's very quick to um, create um, a series of vases um, with the curve tool. So yeah, I think that's all that I wanted to cover. Um, and we will continue on in the next one when we uh, UV unwrap this one. So see you all then.